So I was having a talk today with a, a friend who's thinking about selling her house. And I noticed that, you know, we would go back and forth between, I want to sell my house. I don't know if I want to sell my house. And the pattern that emerged was there was always some reason why it was a bad idea. But I often found that this was the same for home buyers. People think I want to buy a property, but. So in 2019, what we hear is I want to buy a property, but we're at the end of the market cycle. What if house prices drop? Maybe I should wait. And I know that what happened last time that home prices dropped, everyone was thinking, well, maybe I should wait. Prices are going to, they're going to keep going back down even further. And then when they got all the way to the bottom, everybody was saying, maybe I should wait. Maybe the economy's never going to come around. There's no one to rent my house or I won't be able to make my mortgage or I'll lose my job. And then prices started going back up and people thought, oh man, maybe I should wait. Maybe they're going to come back down. And then they weren't coming back down. And then everybody jumped in at one time and it got crazy. And everyone was saying, I don't want to buy in this market. Houses are selling for $50,000 more than what they're listed for. This is overpriced. And then $50,000 more than what it was listed for became a bargain as, as they were now being listed for 100K more than that. And then everybody jumps in. And then everyone starts to think, well, maybe I shouldn't be in because I'm following the herd. So they stop buying. And then you get back to where we are now and people say, am I at the top of the market cycle? And the point I want to make is that you will always have a reason to think I shouldn't buy a house. It will always, always, always feel expensive when you buy your house. That is normal. You're, you're going to think that you're going to feel that it's always going to seem expensive. But then I've never met a person that owned a house for 20 or 30 years that, that felt like, I can't believe I bought that house. I never should have did it. You know, 30 years from now, that $4,000 mortgage that feels so expensive, everyone else is going to be paying nine or 10,000. That's just the reality, maybe more because of inflation. And my point is there will always be a reason not to do something. I promise you, it does not go away. If you had the perfect market where nobody was buying, you wouldn't want to be buying either because no one wants to be the only person in the pool. There's this safety in numbers that comes from, you know, our, our psychology that keeps people from taking action. So what I would say is just accept that your brain will always be telling you of a reason not to do something and choose to ignore that. Instead, focus on if it goes bad, what will I do? Will my rent cover my mortgage? If it won't cover my mortgage, can I make a couple hundred bucks a month to make up for it? Can I start saving money right now that can get me through a couple years of hard times? There's always an action you can take that will be stronger than the fear of not taking action. And that's what I want to tell you guys to do because that's what I do. I feel the same fears as everybody else, but I don't stop at the fear. I say, okay, that's a legit fear. What if the market turns around on me? How can I start saving money right now? How can I diversify what I'm investing in? How can I learn a new skill that will serve me if that happens so that my fear doesn't have any weight behind it? It doesn't have anything to sink its teeth into to, to take hold. And I can tell it basically like, I don't care about what you're saying because I have a plan for you. And I just wish more people thought that way. Yes, if you take a chance in life, it can go bad. If you ask that girl out, she could say no. If you ask for that promotion, the job could say no. If you have a kid, you could make a mistake. If you buy a car, you could wish you bought another car. It goes on and on and on. It can happen. So just ask yourself, if I make this decision and I don't like how it goes, what can I do? What's my recourse? Worst case scenario, can I survive this? And if you can survive the worst case scenario, then go take action because 30 years from now, you will be glad you did. I've never met the person who bought a house and 30 years later wished they wouldn't have did it.